Hey guys, I wasn't planning on making this video. I hadn't driven the Caprice in a few months, but I just moved it from the front of the shop to the back of the shop, and well, listen, listen to this. This doesn't sound like a bottom end issue. It sounds more top end, and everything seems tight here. I thought maybe this was spark arcing, but all the wires, everything looks fine. I'm shutting this thing down. This engine was perfect. I even ordered brand new tires for the Caprice to get it ready for spring a couple of days ago. What in the world could this be? My 2012 Chevy Caprice PPV was originally a police car from Florida and had accumulated 82,000 miles, but over 11,000 hours of idle time or the equivalent of 15 months of just straight idling. The engine ran well, but I wanted to ensure it would run well forever, so I immediately removed and disassembled its six liter LS engine to delete the problematic AFM or active fuel management. This system is designed to save fuel by turning cylinders off while cruising, but sometimes at the expense of the camshaft, lifters, or even destroying the entire engine. Now I replaced everything and installed a much larger camshaft, LS7 lifters, reworked heads, long tube headers, and the Caprice put down some really good power on the dyno and has to be one of my best sounding cars. Unfortunately, now it sounds like I have a valve train issue and at first listen, it could be a bad lifter, which would require at the very least the heads to come off. So we Either I messed something up during the engine build three years ago or a part decided to fail. Either way, the Caprice is one of my most legit street cars and it must be fixed. So let's get right to work. Now, although I'm not hopeful with this, the first step in diagnosing an engine noise is to remove the serpentine belt, just in case it's something on the front end accessory drive. So I've loosened up the tensioner and then we'll just slide it off of the water pump. Love that sound the water pumps make. All right, there's our belt. Belt's in excellent shape. This thing was fleet maintained by a police department, so they just, they did whatever it needed. All right, we're just gonna start this thing up momentarily. I don't really wanna run this engine anymore, but well, let's see what happens. making any noise right now before it would take a few seconds to kick in oh there we go oh you gotta be kidding me okay yeah it takes some time this thing's been sitting here for like a month but wow what in the world is that i haven't driven this car really in you know the last year or so and let's see what we have for oil and it's a little low it's like right here okay it's not enough to make any weird noises well let's go ahead and remove the coil pack so these aren't individual coil packs, but they're all on one rail. Fish our nitrous line out of the way. I've only gone through one bottle on this like two years ago, so it's definitely not a nitrous related thing. Let's just get this guy fully out of the way. Okay. This is one of those things where I hope we don't see anything, but I also kind of do because at least we'd know what's wrong with it. Like an issue with a valve spring or something, something I can fix right here would be nice. It sounds to me like the issue is on the driver's side, so let's pop this valve cover off. Uh, okay, there's lots of moments of truth on this channel, that's for sure. And a lot of times it has to do with engine stuff. What do we have? It's been about three years since I've seen any part of the inside of this engine. It's been fantastic the whole time. And it's normal to get side to side on these. It's no big deal. Almost positive I did the trunnion upgrade when I did the engine that gets rid of the little needle bearings that can pop out of the rocker arms. It's a good upgrade to do on an ELS. Well, I don't see anything obvious. None of the springs are broken. None of the rocker arms are broken. Uh, nothing is loose. Um, okay, I'm gonna take the spark plugs out next. And I wanna bore a scope as well. Although I don't think it's anything bottom end. I'm just thinking lifter at the moment. Plug number one looks good. Plug two also good. This one looks good too. Yeah, that's a good spark plug. Porcelain's not cracked. Okay. Let's get the borescope. All right, here we are, cylinder one. Yeah, not a whole lot to see in here. Piston's pretty far up. Next in line. Yeah, looks pretty normal. Piston's pretty far up on the third one as well, but cylinders look good, pistons look good. Yeah, it looks perfect in here. Okay, great. There's a valve that's slightly open. Okay. I mean, it's good news. We don't have anything in the cylinders, but we still don't know what's wrong with the car, which just stinks. I want to know what's wrong with my Caprice. 
Should I just film everything with the borescope? I've disabled the spark and fuel, so we're gonna crank this right now and just watch these rocker arms and see what we can see. Yep, they all look like they're working. All right guys, before I start ripping cylinder heads off here to check lifters, I have a sneaky weird suspicion about the fuel injectors. I at least wanna eliminate them. So we're gonna put all this stuff back together. It'll just take like five, 10 minutes. And then I'm gonna go one by one and plug in those injectors and just kinda of see what happens. It could be a really, really loud injector. Now, luckily the valve cover gaskets on the LS are reusable. I did replace them though when I did all the engine work a few years back. They are pretty cheap, but we'll be good right now. Start everything by hand. Click our PCV back in. And spark plugs going back in. We were just here. Our spark plugs are in and torqued. We'll get the wires on. These are good AC Delco wires with a good click. I hate cheap wires where you don't know if it's on the plug or not. All right, coils are going back in. Coil connector. And this little guy, these are always kind of funny. Like these connectors are in there. It's not going anywhere, but they give you this little lock pin. I mean, I'll take it, but could have saved some money here. Just like you guys can save a ton of money with Priority Tire, this is the best website to get tires from. Check this out. Free FedEx shipping, 90 day money back guarantee. I ordered tires for the van and they got to my shop in two days. And something I've never seen from any other online tire company is look at the discounts. They have a military, teacher discount, first responder, medical staff discount. This is super cool. You can finance as well. And my favorite is you can have these tires shipped directly to an installer. They have a list as well. So they get done quickly and they have just about every brand tire you could imagine. And they have three gigantic warehouses in the United States. So you can search by size or by vehicle. 2012 Chevrolet Caprice PPV 217 results found. They have every kind of tire you could ever imagine. I ended up going with these full ways, all season, high performance, awesome tread pattern. Look at the reviews. So these should be in any day now. Seriously, guys, if you need tires, give PriorityTire.com a try and just take a look at their prices. They are phenomenal. Now, the best part is, of course, I got you guys a discount. So when you check out with tires or any accessories at PriorityTire.com, just use code legit PT, that's gonna get you 5% off. So I'll leave the link and the coupon code down below. Check it out, give them a try. And with that, let's get back to my engine. It's all back together. Let's fire this thing up and check on these injectors. All right, where's our noise? Where's our noise? Not doing it yet. That's just a little smoke coming off the headers from my hands. It's so weird that the noise doesn't happen right away. Oh, there it is. I don't feel them. Whoa, okay. That's made a big difference. Wow, but it's still there. That's weird. Okay, no difference on that one. Uh, let's see if I can get this guy out. All right, we're skipping that guy. It's getting hot. <laughs> let's go for the last one on this thing. There we go. All right, I got that one off. All right, we're just gonna leave this one disconnected. Still got some noise. Obviously, it's running bad. Now we're on six cylinders. That's okay. The noise is pretty much gone right now. There's still something there, though. All right, the engine's getting hot. I can't get this connector off. This stinks. The noise is gone though. The noise is gone. Hang on, all right. I can't get that connector right now. Let's just plug these in now. See if the noise comes back. Yeah, okay, the noise is gone now. It could have killed these cylinders though. Let's restart it. Car sounds good. I'll give it that. <laughs> all right, we don't have any noise right now. Everything is plugged in. This guy, yep. No noise. What in the world? going on like at this point i want the noise to come back all we did was unplug these two front injectors that definitely changed the noise and now it's gone with these big cam cars it's hard to tell sometimes if it's misfiring so we're going to check the temperature on these headers okay yeah that is not good 140 on that cylinder let's try this one 350 290 okay that's fine that yeah that's within range this is dead this is not working at all. Yeah, that guy is plugged in. This could be spark or fuel. All right. All right, we're gonna start off by testing for sparks. I just grabbed a random spark plug. Okay, okay. Yep, 
it's sparking, that's for sure. So we know we have spark. What's next? We have to figure out if this injector is at least getting power. And we're gonna do that with a Noid light. These come in many different flavors, basically whatever fits. This is for one of the older GMs. I think it's, there we go. This has gotta be it. Okay, cool. Then we're gonna fire it up again and see if this lights up. <laughs> He lights up. All right, so we definitely have injector. It hasn't killed injector pulse width, so let's just plug it in and see if we can notice any difference in running at all. I do not hear any difference. This thing runs exactly the same. Now let's just pull this one that we know is working. Yeah, you can hear that noticeably running worse. Let's see if they cut this off. Nope, that one's still good. Yeah, 148. 301, yeah, this is a dead cylinder. This car was filled up with E85 throughout the winter, but it didn't really get driven all that much. And E85 absorbs a lot of moisture and it could have rusted out the insides of those injectors or gummed them up or something like that. I'm suspecting these injectors have gone bad and we are going to be testing them. I might be cutting them open, but before we get too crazy, I do want to check compression on that one cylinder. I should have done it with a plug out. It's probably got compression, but we gotta, we gotta make sure. Okay, yeah, and I'm, I'm gonna flip the Caprice around now that it runs. This is working underneath the lightning. It's kind of a dungeon, it's annoying. I can't open the hood all the way. We're, we're going to flip it. This thing's got a gigantic cam. It sounds very, very radical, but down on a cylinder, it sounds even crazier. Oh, this is nice. So much room. Okay, let's check and see if we have compression. Now, after all the work I did to this engine, it would be heartbreaking if it was down on compression. This Caprice has been such a trooper since I bought it. I don't drive it too many miles because of all the other cars, but I love this car. It's so comfortable. It sounds so good. A big cam stalled LS doesn't get much better. It's got nitrous too. All right, we'll thread in our adapter for the compression gauge. Okay, compression gauge connected. We're gonna pull out two fuses to shut down the fuel injectors. We've had a lot of compression moments of truth, but here's another one. Please have compression, please. Yes, yes. Okay, I mean, I figured we had good compression, but you never know on an LS, the coils don't typically go bad. We obviously had spark and injectors don't really go bad either. So it was just a little nerve wracking that we were down a cylinder, but we are not the Caprice. We'll live to see another day. So let's get the fuel rail off and hook up some injectors to our fuel injection cleaning tool and maybe slice some open. A screwdriver really helps to remove this guy here. Just don't lose it. Although I've seen a ton of cars that don't have this and the fuel line never pops off, but why not? Right, now we need a special little tool to slide in here and release the clips. Release me. Independence Day. Release me. Release me. Wait a minute, I think I've already done the release me joke. Welcome to Earth. Welcome to Earth. And these injectors have been just fine the last three years but I never ran E85. We tested it on the dyno and it made no power difference whatsoever. And when you factor in the worse fuel economy that you get with E85, the cost savings, because it is cheaper, it kind of just washes itself out. So unless it's a boosted engine where you need that octane, I, I don't think it's worth it. This thing has a decent amount of compression, but we did it right on the dyno, 93 and E85. Uh, I think it gained like one horsepower. Totally not worth it with this stuff that can clog up and destroy injectors. And right, now we'll just pull up on the rail. Just wanna kinda go even on both sides. These guys will pop right up. There we go. All right, rails out. Look at how tiny these injectors are. They're little babies. To pop the injectors out, we just need to remove these little clips with a flat blade like that. And then they just pull out like that. This is the injector we suspect is bad. Get out of here. At first glance, nothing looks wrong with this injector from the outside. Um, yeah, looks pretty normal. I don't want to mix this one up, so we're going to carve a B or something that kind of resembles a B. That's for, that's for bad. So let's do this B I. Bad injector. Bad. Next, we're gonna set them up in the fuel injector testing machine. So this is the furthest back cylinder injector. And then in order, here's the, the BI. All right, slide this on down. Most injectors are much taller than this, but that's why this is adjustable. And we'll 
tighten this up so we don't get any leakage like so. And with this machine, I can do four injectors at a time. So these are somewhat universal connectors that fit on most injectors and they're just gonna plug in. Yeah, these fit really nice on these. On second thought, I installed these aluminum adapters for the injectors, just gave me better access to the plug. It seemed to sit in here better as well. We're gonna start off with an idle test. So it's gonna build pressure right here. I'm always ready to turn this off in case there's a leak. We're running at about 50 PSI of fuel pressure, which is pretty average. And what do we have here? Something is, is different <laughs> than the rest. This injector is totally dead. Yep. All right, well, that'll explain it. This, this guy is dead. Now what's weird is that these aren't making the, the weird noises we were hearing before. And I gotta say, this spray pattern is total garbage. This is really bad. Let's see, we can close this up and, and measure these three against each other to see if they're at least equal. But for a modern fuel injector with this many holes, a lot of holes, this isn't exactly what you wanna see. All right, I've seen enough from you guys. Yeah, at least they're even. I learned this trick from rescuing abandoned vehicles, but sometimes, if you tap on an injector, similar to a starter, you can get it to work. So anyway, let's see what happens. Injector is not working. We'll just give it some love taps. Come on, baby. Come back to us. And right now what we're trying to do is dislodge any gunk in here that's blocking it up. Oh, we got, we got, are we getting drips? Oh yeah, we're getting a couple drips here. We weren't getting anything before. Look at that, fuel is building up. Woo! Oh, look at that drip. It's coming. Oh yeah, it's, just, it's starting to flow. We might have just moved something. Oh yeah, it's starting to work. In my experience, if you keep doing this with pressure behind it, it should open up, at least enough to like get you home or fire that cylinder. A lot better. You can do it, injector. Come on. Oh man, it wants to go. It wants to work. Oh, wait. Is this good? I mean, it's not flowing as much as the other ones, but wow, we, yeah, we got a mist now. We got, we got a mist. It's misting. It's atomizing. It's doing its thing. Come on, let's reset this. We'll have a little race. Let's see if this thing is flowing anywhere near the other ones. I'm gonna keep on giving it some taps. Unclog yourself, boo. All right, so this did flow a little bit less than the other ones, but this would be more than enough to get you home. You wouldn't wanna beat on the car or anything. So if you do get an injector to work by tapping on it, it's just temporary. And I got lucky, these must be really common fuel injectors because my local parts store was able to order these up and they came in like three hours. So we're going with GM factory goodness. Here's a pretty neat comparison of fuel injectors and how they've evolved. So on the left is a stock 19 pound per hour Fox body Mustang injector. And this is a single hole. Next is a slightly larger injector out of my Buick Grand National. You can see it went to four hole. And last we have the new Caprice injector. I don't know how many holes that is, like 20. It's a, it's a ton of holes. As injectors evolved, they went to more holes, which creates better atomization. So you want a mist of fuel and not little dribbles of fuel. So carburetors would kind of drip it in the intake. Then the single hole fuel injectors did a pretty good job of at least squirting it into the cylinder, um, but it was still a very concentrated stream. And then as they added more holes, it just kind of would poof right out into the cylinder and ignite nice and evenly. And now we have direct injection, which is even better because it's under a ton more pressure. So we have evolved. But if you think about it with everything going electric, we're kind of at like the pinnacle, the peak of, of human technology for fuel injection. So what we have now is very likely what we're gonna end up with before the eventual demise of the internal combustion engine. And we all have to drive electric cars. That'll be fun. Before you install your new fuel injectors, just make sure to lubricate the O-rings and then just pop it in and reinstall your clip. If you guys need to replace your fuel injectors, do it yourself. Save yourself a ton of money in labor. You can do it and it's fun. It's usually four bolts, the rail pops off and you just do what I just did there. Probably save yourself two, $300. Now I like cutting things in half, just like the next guy. And uh, I don't know how this is gonna go, but I own a Dremel and I have this really dirty shield thing that I can barely see out of, and a vise with an injector on it. So, let's see, we can see. I mean, we've already cleaned this thing out, so I don't know. Let's just do stuff. Got it. 
Let's get one of those water jets. In case you're wondering, I did blow this out with shop air, so there's not that much gasoline in it. Come on, my Dremel, my Dremel bit, it's just disintegrating to nothing. Come on, injector. We're not messing around here. The Dremel's taking way too long. If you guys are ever wondering what the strongest material on earth is, it's fuel injector. Did something. Didn't say it was gonna be very precise, but okay. Yeah, <laughs> our chances of finding what failed in here have gone down slightly to about zero. Is that okay? Yeah, I think the clog was somewhere in here. Yeah, that's definitely where the clog used to be. So the fuel goes in here and out this way. And the clog was somewhere, somewhere in this area here. Water jet, I need a water jet. Rail and new fuel injectors going in. And you might be asking yourself, Alex, how do you stay so good looking? Just kidding. You're probably asking yourself, Alex, why aren't you putting larger fuel injectors in there for more power? Well, it's true. Larger fuel injectors can support a lot more power with more fuel. Can come the potential of more power, but you need more air. And I don't have any more air coming in. Now, I did install a gigantic camshaft that's going to definitely draw in some more air and some really nice long tube headers to help expel the exhaust, again, freeing up more power. Unless I install something that will give us more air, like a supercharger or a turbocharger, more fuel isn't gonna do anything for me. And I had this tuned on a dyno with the factory fuel injectors, so its calibration is for those, and it runs perfectly as is. There's no real sense in messing with the injectors. Now, if I eventually supercharge it, I, I will. I'll have to get bigger ones. With the injectors properly seated, we can go around and tighten up. The real bolts. A couple of satisfying clicks. Click. And, oh, nice. We don't want the car to blow up, so we'll put this on. This was the problem cylinder. There you go. And a big ignition coil connector on each side. Little blue thing you definitely don't need at all. And we'll get our nitrous fuel feed line installed as well. You may be wondering, Alex, why did, why did you install nitrous on this car? Probably didn't say it like that. You're probably like, Cool, you got nitrous on your car. Well, I'll tell you why. Why though? It's because of this. <laughs> got him! The E55 wagon spanked the Caprice and, and I wanted to make the Caprice feel a little bit better by giving it some more power. So if you guys ever thought the rabbit hole of chasing horsepower on your car is bad, try racing some of your cars against each other and then feeling bad for them and buying more parts to make them faster and equal, and then it, it never ends. Fire in the hole! Hey, no noise. Stay with no noise. Do not make weird noises. Sometimes it would take like 30 seconds. There's gotta be those injectors. What in the world is making the noise again? What is going on? So, so the noise takes about 30 seconds after you start it to present itself and then it does eventually go away. Um, okay, so let's just check cylinder temps right now. And yep, there's our problematic one. Look at that. Nice job, cylinder three. How's this guy? Okay. And yeah, depending on how far away you are, it'll change the reading and stuff. So as long as they're all you know, within like 15 or 20% of each other, you're good, but cool. Well, we definitely fixed our injector issue. Yep, these are all heating up very, very nicely. Now, what in the world was the noise though? All right, um, I am gonna pull the plugs again. I've pulled these a couple of times now, but to me, it almost seems like the spark is jumping, but I don't see anything. And just like in my Rolls Royce video where I shut the lights off and I looked for the spark, I did that with this too, and I, I didn't see anything. Yeah, right there, right there, right there. We got an arc. We have a spark, we have electricity. Hot, 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 no time. This first coil, when I disconnected it, it definitely made the biggest difference in the noise going away. So I'm gonna pull this plug out. But yeah, the, the wire, everything is super intact, the coil. I don't know. All right, let's pull this guy out. All right, so here is that spark plug. Oh, wait a minute. This is a proper spark plug socket, so why is this loose? Ew! 
Oh, look at this. The spark plug is broken. Look at that. Huh, I'd already taken these out. I looked at each spark plug. I didn't see any cracked porcelain or anything. Oh, no, actually that would kind of make sense. Hang on, let's get this guy out. I don't want to break it. I want to really look at this thing the way it was. There we go. No way. This was arcing inside of here. That has to be the issue. I pulled these out. They were all solid. They were obviously weren't wobbling around like this. And whenever I look at spark plugs, they usually crack going this way and you can just see it in the porcelain. But this one was intact. It was fine, it was fine. But this would make sense. A high voltage LS coil pack would have enough power to arc and spark and fire the cylinder, at least at idle. Because if you remember that first header primary was heating up, that cylinder was firing May not have been firing, you know, exactly the way it should be, but that's why I didn't really suspect anything. Like we had a dead injector. This is so crazy. All right, well, I'm hoping this is what does it. Um, and I'm running TR6 colder plugs on this. So let me go see if I got an extra one. I do own a few LS vehicles, boosted ones too. We got wide bands, narrow bands, Bosch, uh, NGKs, and they're not iridiums. This should be, oh yeah, TR6, sweet. Could this be our noise? We're gonna find out. New plug going in. Okay. Done. How many times am I gonna take these plugs in and out? Hopefully this is the last. Okay, let's do this. Fire in the hole. Now it takes time, so let's, let's check temps here. Good. Uh, this one is like the hottest now. <laughs> Although that does kind of concern me here. Oh no, we're, we're getting there, we're getting there. All right, while we wait for this noise to potentially show up, let's just check this side. This is a really good method of searching for a misfire before you even take anything apart. Obviously you want to check for trouble codes too, but th this takes like two seconds and then you know for sure which ones are firing and, and if they're firing well too. You could have one that's like 100 degrees off, so it's just, it's working, just, just not to its potential. It's been like a minute. There's absolutely no noise. I've never had this. I mean, since the problem started, I've never had this. That's it, guys. I've never seen a spark plug fail this way. I sent a video sound clip of this engine to a few of my friends like OJ at Fluid and a few other automotive YouTubers that you guys see me with every once in a while. And they all said lifter too. It sound, sounded like a lifter. The only thing that was weird, and OJ had mentioned this, was that the rhythm didn't necessarily sound like a lifter. It was off. And that would make a lot of sense. This sounds perfect. This is awesome. Good injector, a good cylinder, even though it was working, but who knows what this was doing at full throttle. We could have been down on power for a while because the plug wasn't actually loose. This car could have more power than it had before. I'm sure it wasn't broken like this on the dyno though. I mean, it ran perfect. We obviously didn't hear any noise. I don't know. It's been a long time since I've driven it though. And you know how sometimes after winter, if you haven't driven your fast car for a while, it just feels a lot faster. That might be the case here. You guys don't know how happy I am. I was expecting to have to take at least that one cylinder head off and replace the lifters and then hope that the camshaft was okay, in which at that point I'd probably be dropping the engine once again. The Caprice is back, it is back. So we're gonna treat it with an oil change right now before I take you out for a Caprice experience because this is one of the most fun cars to drive. And guess what? Guess what I got? My tires came in from Priority Tire. It only took two days. So my friend Arnie from Cannonball Garage, he had a Caprice too. He gave me these two wheels and tires. So I'm gonna swap the new tires onto here. I'm gonna replace them all, but I'm gonna save these tires on these rims because they still have a lot of meat on them. Tires are off and my rears were pretty much shot as well. Uh, these tires are about five years old, but those those will make for some good burnout tires or spare tires. I might just keep them for trips to, to save me in an emergency situation. That's why I bought a wagon, people. I needed to bring the old pressure washer home. And now I need to load tires. We got them all in. It's a tight squeeze, but it works. There's room to spare. All right, we had to put one in the front seat, but it works. CTSV wagon. When you need to drop your tires off quick. <laughs> so while the tire guys do their thing, we're gonna do an oil change and we're gonna also adjust this exhaust. See how it's capped off right here? And this thing just kind of does this loop. This is an adjustable exhaust from Solo Performance and I've never played with it. So supposedly, if you move this pipe back and forth, it changes the exhaust note. It's kind of like, 
What's that one instrument that you move, you know, the thing back and forth? I wasn't in band class. Is that a trombone? You know, with the little slide piece and then it changes the tone? Trombone? I don't know. I just work on cars, people, okay? I don't know anything about trombones and trumpets and stuff. But I do know that Chicago winters make it difficult to remove nuts and bolts. So we're putting some penetrating oil on it. And I haven't looked underneath here in about a year, but everything looks good. I resealed the entire engine three years ago. Nothing's leaking. Headers look great. This car does have catalytic converters as well. Let's drain some oil. Watch after all of that connecting rod bearing material just starts dumping it out. Let's see what we got. Oh no. Okay. Whew. I thought it spilled onto the ground. We're good. No fuel. It smells beautiful. It smells like about 4,000 mile oil. So if you're wondering because of the amount of cars that I have, I don't really get to put too many miles on them every year. So I basically just change the oil once a year on all the cars. New oil filter going in. And then of course I'm filling up my Caprice with the good stuff. We're using 5W30 and this is the Amsoil Signature Series. I'm using the Signature Series, which is kind of overkill because it's good for 25,000 miles. But no matter what oil you guys use, check out the Amsoil site. It's got a lot of good information, like how many quarts your car takes and the torque spec for the drain plug, and it'll give you the capacity of your transmission. Here it is for your coolant. So anyway, if you don't have your owner's manual, don't bother scouring the internet on forums to find this stuff out. Just use this website. All right, let's adjust some exhaust. Okay, let's see if this changes anything. Okay, didn't, didn't really change anything at all. I did have it on like quiet mode. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's crazy how much quieter. I can't believe I'm saying this car's quieter. All right, so I think you're actually supposed to adjust this little part here. It's just hard to get to on the car. Okay, yeah, I think this is what actually changes the sound. All right, let's see. Okay, so. much of a difference. All right, I talked to Solo and they said the adjustment on this J-pipe is done right here and it's more so for driving. So if you hear an RPM that's maybe droning or vibrating or something like that, you can fix that with this. So he said it will make a sound difference, just not at idle. So I'm gonna push these all the way in and see if it sounds any different. It's probably still gonna be really loud. New meets are on. And I really like the tread design of the HP 108 tires by Fullway. It just looks so good. With my yearly maintenance complete and fresh tires, let me go give you the Caprice experience. And if you haven't heard the rev matching and how cool this transmission shifts, you're in for a treat. Today's my first day driving it with these new tires. I know the car's kind of loud, but before, when I would let off, yeah, I could hear them. They were like five, six-year-old tires. These fullways are nice. They look good, they sound good. Second time getting tires from PriorityTire.com. It's good stuff. All right, we're putting the PI Performance Improver in. And this is an E85 car, by the way. And guys, I'm not saying don't run E85. It's an awesome fuel for power. It's just in the winter time. Don't let it sit around. Don't run it on E85. All right, so we're going back to some 93. And in the winter time, the ethanol content is way lower and it's usually sitting in the tanks for a while. So it absorbs moisture. And then it sits in your car's tank that you don't drive really all that much in the winter, more moisture. And that's probably what rusted up that fuel injector. Look at that, under five bucks. It's basically free. The Caprice only has a 16 gallon tank. That's, that's pretty small. overall i've said this before it's the best engine overall overall the package the affordability the power output and capabilities and strength and i like it so with the rev match you can also kind of like activate it by flipping the throttle that's it so like i'm off right now and it just ah, it does its thing it's so cool there it is i just like a little quick one and it turns it on and then you're ready to go so like you could just give it a blip and then just get right into it There it is! It loves the rev match! 
tap on the brakes there it is <laughs> guys that makes the car like the fact that this is a torque converter transmission with factory rev matching it, and it ships fast like it does a great job this was an eight thousand dollar police car in mint condition when i bought it it had 82,000 miles, but it ran perfectly. But $8,000, this has to be like one of the easiest ways to get in a more modern LS vehicle. I, they're still, a, they've gone up a little bit, but they're still very, very affordable. Now that the car prices have kind of come back down, you can pick one of these up for about eight grand. I don't even know if like the fifth generation Camaros and Chevy SS's and all that stuff, that's basically the same car. Do, do they have those Camaro guys? I don't know. <laughs> snap crackle pops it's just it's too easy and then and then yeah, it's just a normal car comfy it's big it rides beautifully we'll turn our little modes off here there we go yeah it's a great car needs a little headliner work but you know little minor details all right guys i'm gonna end this video on a high note I'm running into traffic here so after this i'll splice in some cool footage of the caprice um but I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. We fixed a couple of different problems. They were they were kind of weird and scary at the same time, but ultimately we got the Caprice back on the road uh, with minimal work and for minimal money. The injectors were only like $300 for all eight of them and an oil change and, and we're ready to rock hopefully for the rest of time. So if you guys enjoyed this video, if you like a channel that just gets right to work, then give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already. We are on the way to 1 million subscribers. If you've been watching the channel for a bit and you haven't subscribed yet, just click the button. It really helps me out. I'd really appreciate it. And with that, and most importantly, have a fantastic day. Woo, I know I will. Woo! And it could be that all these, and it could be that all these injectors are slight. And it could be that, although I've, although I've seen a mil, Although I've seen a ton of cars that don't have this in the fuel rail and never. Focus, focus injector, it's like the sun. Oh, where are you? Oh, there we go. Now I like cutting things in half, just like, just as much as, yeah. Now I like cutting things in half, just as, now I like, yeah. So if the, so if the cylinder's dead, so if the cylinder. Yeah, oh, and I, I was putting that back for some stupid reason. I need to put gas in it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and that would make, and that would make a lot of, and that would make a lot, and that would make a lot of sense. So anyway, if you don't have your owner's manual, don't bother scouring the internet. So anyway, if, come on, come on, come on, people, try to film a video. The amount of traffic. I need to move myself out to the country. <laughs>